Thank you very much, Defense Minister for uh, your kind introduction. Thank you for the government leaders here in Croatia and to the people of Croatia for their warm hospitality you have extended to me in a very short time that I've been here. It's an honor uh, to meet with many of the other leaders of the region of this summit. Visiting Croatia has been truly a lifelong dream of mine, never realized until just yesterday. It was exactly 100 years ago that a 17-year-old farmer by the name of John Begich left the family farm in the small village of Polovapatsa over the mountains from the Adriatic, not, from, not far from Zagreb. Upon landing at Ellis Island, they gave him a new name, Begich, with an H at the end, and the permission to establish himself in America. John Begich was my grandfather. He eventually settled in Minnesota's Iron Range up in the northern region of Minnesota. John Begich and his young bride, uh, Anna Martinich, had four children. Their youngest, Nicholas, made his way to America's new frontier of Alaska, even before we were a state. He was my father. Nick Begich was an educator and eventually was elected Alaska's lone member of the United States House of Representatives in 1970. I'm honored to follow in his footsteps as a member of the United States Senate, where I am the only member of Croatian descent. From the moment of my election nearly three years ago, the people of Croatia have treated me as a long lost son. In fact, I had better coverage by the news of Croatia in the Croatian press than my own hometown newspaper back in Alaska. When I was invited to participate in the Croatian summit, I jumped at the opportunity. Not because I'm an expert in the issues of this region, but more to commend the people of Croatia for your enormous progress and your great partnership with my country and to recognize the other many members of this region. Croatia has made a remarkable political progress since the end of the war more than 15 years ago. You are a welcome member of NATO and will soon become the 28th member of the European Union. Both of these landmarks came with enormous challenges, and I salute your achievement. This will continue to have bumps in the road as you continue to build your new future. And there is no doubt that Croatia has earned membership in both. As a NATO member, Croatia has stepped up to the responsibility of providing security in both the region and internationally. As a member of the Armed Services Committee, I'm closely tuned in to the military engagements across the globe. By the end of this year, nearly 10,000 soldiers from my own state of Alaska will be serving in harm's way in Afghanistan. This is one of the highest percentages of any state in the United States. This service on the front lines is not without controversy back home, and I know you face the same questions here, so I thank you for your partnership. Croatia's troop commitment in Afghanistan, 330, soon to be 350, is one of the highest per capita contributions in the international security and assistance forces there. And Croatia has taken the lead in establishing a military police training center in Afghanistan, to which other members in the region will contribute trainers. This cooperation alone is far away in faraway Afghanistan, involving countries that not long ago were embroiled in vicious war, brings a certain stability to the region <coughs> of the former Yugoslavia, and creates unique opportunities. Fifteen years ago, Croatia was a security consumer with the UN peacekeeping troops deployed throughout the country. It is now a security provider with 472 troops deployed across the globe, including Kosovo, Golan Heights, Afghanistan, Western Sahara, India, Pakistan, and the counter piracy operations in the Gulf of Aden. They even have staff officers assigned to NATO operations in Libya. One impressive observation, Croatia recently hosted a U.S.-led immediate response military exercise involving troops from countries throughout the region. Most importantly, Serbian troops participated. Imagine just more than 15 years since Serb and Croats troops fought and fought it out throughout the country. Serbian and Croatian troops cooperated side by side in an exercise to ensure security in the region. This is a testament to the determination of the governments of Serbia and Croatia to put the past behind them. This type of cooperation ensures that the region will have a secure 
and prosperous future. Croatia has demonstrated a desire to play a constructive role in assisting neighbors, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Bosnia's stability and prosperity are absolutely key to security in the region. Croatia is in a positive position to play a positive and leading role in assisting countries in the region in their efforts at the Euro-Atlantic integration. Joining the EU and NATO with their shared values of democracy, human rights, rule of law, is perhaps the best way to ensure security and prosperity in the region. In early May, I was honored to welcome in my office in Washington, D.C., the Croatian President Josipovic. I congratulate him on the enormous progress of Croatia has achieved in a, letter, in a little more than a decade after a devastating war. I understand that the per capita income is the second highest in the former Yugoslav states. Health, education, and other quality of life factors are on par with many European countries. Despite these signs of progress, the President reminded me that Croatia's economy remains troubled and with high unemployment and outdated industries. That's a situation we can certainly sympathize with in my own country. One note of caution. Croatia still has a long way to go to reform its overly bureaucratized economy in a way that will ensure prosperity and ensure stability and encourages, as some of us already said, investment. Croatia, Croatia like many, other, many of its European nations, is in a position to play a positive role in providing security in the Mediterranean that's in transition. I noted earlier that Croatia has provided staff officers as members of NATO team conducting operations in Libya. Croatia also stated publicly that it is working with the anti Qaddafi Transitional National Council and has recognized it as a legitimate voice in the Libyan people. Just as the countries of East and Central Europe had their own European Spring in 1989 and after, North Africa and Middle East is moving toward a kind of democracy and social justice that, for the most part, has eluded them. The nations of Europe, especially those like Croatia who have made the transition from dictatorship to democracy can and are playing a special role to help all the people of the Mediterranean achieve democracy, rule of law, and prosperity. The Euro-Atlantic engagement with the pro-democracy movements in North Africa and the Middle East is the best way to ensure their revolution, their revolution do not take the turn down the wrong path. Also, also with the assistance in long-term security, of the Mediterranean. The U.S. is anxious to assist with economic partnerships with this region. One specific area that I noticed just being part of this region for the last 24 hours is tourism. From what, what, from what little I've been seeing in Dubrovnik, you have an enormous and attractive city with enormous potential that Americans would love to attend. And I agree with the earlier comment, it is hard to be inside with such great weather outside. And we certainly welcome Croatia's visitors to our states, including Alaska. Let me just say that as we talk about the security of the Mediterranean and the region as it grows, the other piece not only is from a military perspective and the anti-terrorism that's been already talked about and what we do in the merging uh, North Africa and Middle East, also economic security is important. Economic security in my view, will also create overall security to the region. So as you move forward, as each region, as each country moves forward, and you look to the security from a military perspective, terrorism perspective, North Africa, Middle East, the economic component is critical for the long-term health of the Mediterranean. Let me conclude by restating how excited I am to be here in Croatia and to commend you all for a productive and lasting partnership with the United States. And this successful conference creates more cooperation within the region. Thank you.